Hello everyone, and in this series of videos, we're going to be taking a look at the G1000. Now, I've done some videos of the G1000 in the past, and uh, those have been concentrated on the default G1000. This series is basically going to be concentrating on the G1000NX, which is a completely free mod that you can scoop up on the marketplace. Uh, the way I intend on doing this is basically treating the first video as kind of a big old overview and sort of it in action. The second video is basically going to be dedicated to setting it up. The third video is going to be dedicated to basically doing any sort of uh, tweaks, kind of working through the buttons. And then the fourth video is going to be dedicated to everything about flight plans. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, we climb inside this plane. Um, I've installed the mod. Like I said, you can scoop up the mod of the marketplace. We'll take a look at that next video. I'm just treating this as if this was an everyday flight. You know, I'm just getting inside the plane. You know, I do my little stretchy thing. And the first thing, of course, I want to get in the plane. After you've gotten, like, you know, in the back seat, I'd go ahead and stick my ADS-B on the window. I'd come in here. I'd play with the seat. My little headphones would be dangling off the head here. You'd have to do one of these things where you try to reach in here and jam your little... Oh, this look really, really flat. You'd have to go ahead and plug... Actually, wait a minute. You can't plug your headphones into those. Oh no! Um, what you would do is you plug your headphones in, you know, you stick your big stack of uh, metal papers over here with your little clipboard and everything. There'd be a huge jumble of papers down here with like your checklists and everything like that. But um, we're gonna skip all that stuff and get right to the fun part. So the G1000 is a glass cockpit system. Like I said, this is the NX version. This is the jacked up up to 11 version of this. This is an incredible system that has a lot of features that you will probably never get to see if you just flew what I always flew in my early days, which is all glass inch or traditional instruments, I should say. The first closest thing I've ever had to glass cockpit in the real world was a G5, to give you an idea. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing started. Uh, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and I'll flip on these two. When you do that, you're going to get this big Garmin display, which is going to look pretty grumpy at you. Uh, one thing worth noting, by the way, is if you want to actually switch over to desktop, if you actually hold right alt and click on it, you can actually pop this display out. So if you want to stick this on another window or something like that, you're certainly welcome to go ahead and do that. It's just kind of a neat little trick for those of you who are you know kind of inclined for that sort of thing. When you first start this thing up, it's going to have a bunch of angry uh, warnings on here, the ARs, which is basically a little inertial gyro in there. This is going to take some time to warm up uh, while it's going. I try to get everything else in the plane ready to go here. We're going to make sure our fuel is selected on. We're going to make sure we crack our throttle a little bit. I don't know what the deal with this plane is, but in the real world, you do not have to push the throttle that far to get this thing to idle decently. We'll go ahead and flip over here. We'll go ahead and bop on our little bacon switch here. Oh, we need to, without bacon, there is no food. Push this button right here, and we're pretty much ready to start. One thing you probably observe is the fact that I don't have anything armed as far as avionics goes. Uh, the reason I don't need to charge this is because we need to get the thing going. These are massive, massive, massive electrical consumers here. So we need to make sure we take care of that first. So let's go ahead and uh, crank this sucker over. This is uh, when you stick the key. I used to get head around. You look around the airplane. Go, oh my God. Oh, you know, one of those. And you open the window and you yell, clear prop. And then you listen and nobody comes around. You're like, okay, fine, be that way. So you sit here, you crank it a couple times. I think it brrr, and catches on you finally. And then uh, this is more of a Microsoft Flight Simulator thing than it is anything. But I actually have to really, really fits with, I'm like, my throttle is pushed in a lot in order to get this thing up to its idle RPM. For those of you who don't know, uh, the idle RPM this thing is supposed to be between, they say 800 to 1200. I just use 1000. The reason that has to be so high is we basically are trying to keep lead out of the fuel, or I should say we have lead in the fuel. We're trying to keep lead out of our spark plugs. Another thing I recommend doing is you always crack the mixture like that, and now we're good to go. With that started, we can go ahead and bop on the two avionics buses, and we can start getting to the G1000 side of things, which will be pretty slick. So when you first start this thing up, uh, notice you have no NAV2 and you have no COM2. The reason of that is because until you kick on the main battery bus, nothing else is going to pop up, but now it is. So like I said, for this video, I'm going to be concentrating just on using it as if I were flying the plane like myself. Later on, we'll take a look at some of the other details. I'll kind of do a little bit of play-by-play. -play. So we're sitting here. This is a Newport State Airport. Now oh, you can see we're way, way in the middle of everything here. Not really. Uh, we're just kind of chilling right here. This is basically Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, we're going to be popping over, not too, too long of a flight here, zipping over to a Groton, which is uh, just down the way. And like I said, just concentrating on workflow today. So the first thing I would always do after climbing in here and uh, getting the engine all started, um, in the real world, you have these little cool SD cards where you can shove in your flight plan. We can't do that. I'm just going to go set up a quick little flight plan, make sure everything's working. There's a bunch of different ways that we can actually use to set up the flight plan, depending on kind of what you want to do here. Unfortunately, this one doesn't automatically grab the closest airport to you, which is kind of shame because that's usually what it does. We go set this over here to Q because <laughs> that seems to be the airport. Again, uh, sometimes I'll do this in the air. Uh, sometimes when I have somebody who's flying with me, I'll have them do it because it's, uh, again, takes a couple moments to kind of zip through. But you can see I just basically set up uh, where I am. It asks what runway we're going to use. Oh, well, we need to go ahead and check the ATIS. So let's go ahead and this is what I would do next. Keep in mind in the real world, I have a little tablet that I'd be checking a lot of these things on too. But a lot of times what I do is I'd come over here. It would say, what's this one? You could go, okay, and press the uh, button for it. And normally there's a little nearest option here so you can actually hit it with your 
finger, the one that you want to do. Ah, but it won't do it. So instead, we'd have to come in here and kind of play this game. We could sit in here, and uh, this gives us a lot of details. Let me go ahead and dial that in. Actually, um, do I want to do it that way, or do I want to do it that way? Hmm, like I said, every day is a little different, depending kind of what's going on here. Let's go to, so, do, 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 let's go to this one, and yeah, press this one right here. Is this going to work for me today? Let's go ahead and take a look. Nope. Let's go ahead. There we go. There it is. So now we go ahead and get the uh, selected waypoint weather here. The METAR says, uh, let's see, we're going on 200 degrees, 13 gusting, 23 knots. So uh, that's not too, too, too bad as well. I mean, kind of a situation here. Uh, the other thing I like to do point at this, you can zoom way, way in. In the real world, you can actually zoom all the way down to the runway, like you can see right here. So we know that the wind, for example, is coming out of 200. So when we take off, we're probably going to have to pick one of these two runways. 200 is closer to south, so it's going to be this guy right here. Taking a quick look, though, it looks like uh, we're going to be ta taxing, going straight, left, crossing, going all the way down. So again, these are all things I can do before I've even got this airplane moving, which is incredible. Like I said, I usually uh, do all these things before I take off. Before we get going, though, we want to make sure we go ahead and get all our frequencies correct here. So this one's pretty Pretty straightforward you can see our traffic is a 123050 so what we do is we come up here and we go ahead and do 123 uh, one of the kind of uh, workflow things that I always do let me go ahead and get out of this page real quick just to kind of make it easier is what I'll do is I go to my system setup this is uh, something you don't have to deal with in the real plane because like I said it's a little different but one of the things you could do under system setup is you can actually set this thing not to use the teeny frequencies I call them so I'm actually going to come here set this to 25 so now when I'm changing the radio check it out Ah, oh, they're big open, big numbers rather than little teeny numbers that I've never had to use in a uh, general aviation plane. I'm sure bigger planes have to use it all the time, but for me, it's just, uh, it's just work, it's just work. All right, so now I pop out. So what I would do now is I go ahead and I'm flipping that frequency real quick. 123050. So I just come up here, do 123. We go ahead and do an 050 kind of thing. Look how easy that is. Boop. And now, of course, I'd make my call. You know, I'd say taxiing to the active runway. I think, uh, let's see here. I was runway 16 is going to be the runway today. So if I make all my announcements, I'd set everything up. I do all my general communications. Oh, one thing I usually do, too, is uh, when I'm starting to roll and I'm kind of getting my way, this is a good time to go ahead and set up your pre-altitudes for your automatic pilot and stuff like that. Like I said, man, does this thing need a ton of throttle to get this going. I always like to zoom way, way the heck in, though. It's my little navigation display when I do this. And then I just kind of make my way towards the end of the runway there. One of the things I like is that Microsoft Flight Simulator automatically latched on to this stuff over here, and it started getting me going. One thing we want to do, too, is, again, I'll mention this later on, is I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything's set up as far as my altimeter goes. A lot of times I like to play with the map in HSI. What I'll do is I'll crank the map detail down. Uh, the reason I do this is because I don't need to see it. One thing I love to do, though, is I like to flip on the traffic, and I like to shut off the topo. Now, you're probably saying, why are you doing that? Well, let me show you. If I flip on my HSI map now, which uh, hopefully doesn't uh, crash Microsoft Flight Simulator, see, I get this like little half display here. So what I can do now, by the way, you'd always call crossing of a runway. Um, what I can do now is if I zoom this out, I get a little cool radar display, which lets me know all the traffic. Obviously, there's no traffic for the purpose of the video that allows me to see exactly kind of what's around me. I'm actually going to clear this out real quick. I don't need to see it because, again, I'm not too worried about it. So it's a really slick trick. You could also do this with the inset map if you needed. Uh, the one downside to the inset map, though, is that when you are operating it, you can end up running into like just too much clutter. So a lot of times what I will do is I'll come back here on like, for example, you can flip on rel terrain that's basically going to tell you who's around and again i'll talk about this on another video you can also turn on your weather again you can turn so many cool things on here other things i like to do too is i actually shut this off typically i know a lot of people are like oh why would you do that and the real plane i don't mind it in the flight sim it's it's it can be a little annoying sometimes, not going to lie. The other thing, too, is you can shut off this heading label, which kind of appears off in the distance. But again, we'll talk about that all later. Wind, of course, option three. That's the correct option. You can set your bearings. I don't feel the need to. I really don't need to feel the need to press any of those. Again, we'll talk about all this less stuff later, so I'm not going to worry about it. Make sure OBS is not suspend. Otherwise, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. we got my timer. we got everything else like that ready to go. Go ahead and get us a little closer to the runway, and we'll go ahead and uh, do our direct command to go ahead and set up what we need to do for our uh, final piece here. So I'm going to go direct. Like I said, we're traveling over to uh, Groton today, which is a Kilo Golf Oscar November. I'm just going to go ahead and see myself here. Keep in mind, I'm doing a couple things a little bit differently, but again, that's just to make my own sanity here. So we're going to go up and uh, select the airport we want to. Again, I just press the D with a little arrow key. Like This is extremely basic flying. Like I said, we're not doing anything crazy. We're basically just popping over for a $500 hamburger kind of a day. 
Oh, let's see, K-G-O-N. You'd always want to do this on the move um, before you start moving. You can see the sucker updates immediately. You can see I've got a nice little line here. You can also see my runway is uh, going to be 2-2 there, not 1-6. That was my mistake, but that's fine. Like I said, as long as we take off in the right direction. So now we go ahead and get going. We're just going to kind of pop on the runway here. There's a lot of little tiny things we could do here. This is just what I do in the real world. Like I said, it's a little different because like a lot of times I have somebody who flies with me. So a lot of kind of the twisty knobby stuff on the right side is kind of pre-done because I write it all out before I actually go flying so that I have a general idea what I need to do. We'll go ahead and set our target altitude here. We're going to be traveling to the west, which means it's got to be an even altitude, but we're under 3,000, so we can stick with 2,500 today. Line up with the runway. Now, one thing I always like to do before I go ripping down the runway here is I always like to synchronize my heading bug. I just come over here and push in on the heading button, and all that's going to do is it's going to make my heading bug line up with my runway. I actually saw that it was slightly off, so you can actually sit here and wiggle this little thing, and you can see right on the map exactly what I need to do to be able to see kind of where I'm going in that general direction. Again, it depends on how you do it. Everybody's different. There's no, uh, I mean, there's wrong ways to do it, but there's also a lot of just, you know, kind of what works for you. I'm going to go ahead and give it full throttle, and we're just going to go ripping down the runway. Now, Newport State uh, Airport is a, <laughs> it's a little teeny airport. Looking down here, um, what you're going to notice, oh, I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see my rotate is uh, marked by the little teeny R right there. Uh, for this particular plane and this particular configuration, we're going to go ahead and give that tug right when we hit the 55. We're going to go ahead and hold it right at VX because uh, we have some terrain ahead. I'll hold a little bit further back. A little bit further back, there we go. And what we're going to do is now we're going to let the nose come down. We're going to go up to VY. And again, one of the great things is all those values are presented to you and basically like a nice little bow. There we go. There's our VY speed. We always want to kind of hang on to our runway heading until we get at least, as I, usually I say about 700 feet here. So there we go. And it's about uh, 75 knots. I'm getting up to 500 here. You can see I've already zipped by my little course line there. But again, not a problem. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you get a better look at kind of uh, where we're going and what we're doing here. All right, just holding that VY, no problem. Go ahead and get yourself a couple wax of trim here. It's not too, too windy today, so I'm not too worried about it. There's my 700 feet. We're going to go ahead and take our right turn, and I can see the lovely little tower there, and there's the Newport Bridge. It does not take long to get here, which I think is kind of handy. Generally, after that, you know, you'd make all your radio calls. You know, you're now you know, departing to the west. You know, this is my altitude, kind of a thing like that. One of the things we don't see well here is the fact that we're about to fly into an extremely congested, extremely, I don't want to call it sketchy, but I'm going to call it busy airspace, believe it or not. If I were to actually zoom out of the G1000 just a teeny tiny bit, um, all of our airspace, yeah, there they go. You'll see all of our airspaces start to appear almost immediately. So all those airspaces, we either have to stay under or we got to go over them. Now, for us, uh, we're going to go flying right into them unless we chill a little south of the bridge. Now, the reason I know we can do that is if you take a look at this ring right here, you can see how this ring, which is uh, the one, like I said, this is a different airport, but the big one, the Providence here, we can actually just skirt, skirt if we're very, very careful through this little operation here. And like I said, we can probably stay underneath that one without too much trouble. Again, it all goes back to flight planning. You, know, you don't want to do, find these things out the hard way when you're already airborne. But at the same time, is there's no reason why we can't take advantage of the information presented to us, especially if something comes up that requires us to make some kind of change. So normally what we do now is uh, we start making our way kind of towards the destination. I'm not a big autopilot guy until I kind of get to the altitude. This is, again, in the real world versus the simulator. The simulator, you pop the thing on as fast as you can because, you know, I've got other things to do and buttons to push and stuff like that. But for me, a lot of it is just kind of be doing this kind of gentle kind of climb out. We're pretty darn heavy today, so it doesn't surprise me at all. Again, all my information is presented to me in kind of a nice, neat format. I'm looking at the clouds off in the distance. I'm not really thrilled about them, but I'm not going to worry about it too, too much either. About 2,000 feet. Like I said, we can just, just skirt, skirt. We would have to have uh, called up the approach controller and basically requested permission to do what we're doing right now. I'm not going to worry about that today because, again, I, we're not on VATSIM and we're not in the real world or anything like that either. So I'm not going to worry about it too, too much here. All right, that's looking pretty good. Give it a couple of taps at trim here. Just kind of kind of hold it steady. Again, it's a 172. It's not the most sophisticated aircraft out there. And again, the G1000 <laughs> really, really improves, you know, your workability and awareness here. So we got about 100 to go, so I just will go ahead and level the plane off. This is always fun in the real world because you do your initial level off every single time, and then the plane gets really, really loud. It's up, of course, um, in this plane, because it's a fixed-pitch propeller, just and starts getting noisy on you. Again, because we're starting to pick up speed, more air moving through the propeller disc, it sort of takes away on you. One of the things I love about the G1000 is if you see that little green circle, if you put that green circle right on the horizon, um, theoretically, you really shouldn't be gaining or losing any altitude. But you're going to notice that just the way that they programmed it, it's like, eh, slightly. In the real world, it's so sensitive. I'm going to go ahead and zoom myself back out. I'm getting a flashing red warning because I'm exceeding my maximum RPM here. 
I'm going to go ahead and level off right at 25. A couple taps of trim. The real Cessna, you basically take the uh, trim wheel and push it like, eh, let's call it two inches forward, not even. And that's exactly as much trim as you need for cruise. And like I said, I usually do about 2,500 in the real world. But since we're making a video for YouTube, we're going to use 2,600. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and flip on my automatic pilot. We're going to go ahead arm, autopilot, flight director, nav. Now, the reason I know the autopilot worked is because all this text is green. Green means the autopilot is on. Green ALT means altitude has been selected. Green GPS means not only are we using the GPS for our role program, we also have the ability to actually have captured this. Uh, when we talk about things a little later on, one of the downsides of the GPS is we're going to always hit a situation where because this GPS needs a certain, uh, basically, let's say call it distance from it before it will actually latch on to the course you need to travel at. You have to be really, really careful with this because you can turn it on and it won't go and go find the course. You have to get to the course, then you can turn it on. It's kind of like a VOR if you want to think about it in the old way. So now that I'm at altitude, the next step we would do, of course, is we'd lean our mixture if we're at like serious altitude. The book says 3,000 feet. Uh, we're chilling here at, uh, as you can see, about 2590. So well, we're in a pretty, pretty darn good spot right here. So I don't need to worry about that too much. Uh, next thing, of course, what we would do is we'd start kind of going through the whole motions of uh, getting ready for landing. If you take a look at our distance here, um, we're only 15 minutes out. I'll skip the trip so you won't have to worry about that piece. But what I do like to do is uh, start collecting information about my destination. You, again, normally I'd have my little tablet in front of me so I can check all this stuff. But if I had to, I can always do it directly from the G1000 as well. You know, I can come over here. Notice the destination is not listed. The reason there's no destination here is because we didn't use a flight plan. We used direct to. Direct to will only go to the thing you tell it to go directly to. I know that sounds odd, but it's a, one of those things that'll come up. And for super short flights like this, I don't bother with the flight plan unless, of course, I put it on one of these little guys. A later video, will, of course, will go into the details about how you program the flight plan, how you change it, things like that. We're not going to worry about that today. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and flip over here. This all looks delightful. I'm going to go ahead and uh, quickly, we don't want VOR, actually. We want, what did you set to? Yeah, that's the one I want. Boop. That's the one I wanted. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to collect some information about uh, uh, Groton, which is our destination. This is the one I want to edit. Yeah, so I'm going to give this one a quick wiggle. Again, I'll go into all the details in a later video. This is just how I use it. Go over to here. We're going to go up to Groton. That's a J-K-L-M-N-O. And we're just going to select the letter November here. And that's it right there. Press enter. And it's going to give me all the details. Now, another thing I love about the uh, G-1000, you get this in the real plane too, is we have all the different runways, information, and all this other cool stuff. But um, you know what's really, 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 really cool? You can actually select the frequencies. So for example, if I knew I had to uh, get the ATIS frequency, I could go down here, see where it says ATIS and AWAS. What I can do is I can actually go over here, flip to the channel I want to flip it in. Watch this. I'll come over here and press enter. Doing. If you take a look now, the ATIS is automatically loaded in. It's, it's so handy. So darn handy. So now I'm going to go flip back to my regular. Of course, I'll be set up a tower would be the next one we want to talk to. That's going to be the chaps over in tower. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. And if we wanted to do an ILS approach, you could even come down here and select the ILS frequencies and it will auto load everything in here, which I don't know about you. I think that's that's pretty amazing because um, in the old days, you just had to sit there going, e -e 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 -e, cranking numbers and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm going to skip the trip and uh, we'll go ahead and see you folks uh, right before we're going to put this thing down. All right, we're about 15 miles out or so. This is a good time to go ahead and start getting everything ready for landing here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go check the weather. So uh, normally what I would do is I come over here and you have your little kind of central console for audio. You just press the COM2 button. And in a real world, you just start here talking to you pretty much right away. You'll notice just the way this kind of works. It's, uh, whoa, huh? ah, that was not the right frequency. Sorry about that. Now we're on the right frequency. Oh, no, no. I did it twice. You'll do that too. There we go. Now, ideally, yep, there it goes. Uh, wind 255 at 17. Visibility is 9. Our sky condition, a few clouds at 4,800 feet. Ceiling is oh, 13,800. Looks good to me. Uh, broken temperature is going to be 15 degrees. They're probably going to give us a dew point 13. Altimeter setting 2992. That sounds pretty good to me. Visual runway 2 tree is in use. Delightful. So what you would do now, of course, is uh, you go ahead and shut that off because it'll make you absolutely crazy as you're sitting here. So just push that button to kill it. So uh, after we do all that, we, of course, would pop over to their frequency. A uh, zip, oh, oh, helps you push the right button. Pop over to the frequency. You know, you'd say, you know, Groton Tower, da 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 But of course, because we have to make things complicated, uh, we have to actually go over here and click the button in order to actually succeed at this. So I'm going to request a full stop. They'll go ahead and give us some information. At this point, I'm going to start getting ready to land. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, select my new target altitude for the TPA. 
with Ocker, notice they uh, mentioned a runway two tree, which is what I wanted. One thing I usually do in the real world is after they give me a runway, I always like to set my heading bug to that runway just as a mental way to kind of figure out exactly what I need to do to kind of put this thing down. So we're going to go ahead and descend. So I'm going to press vertical speed. 500 feet per minute is, in my mind, the standard for the Cessna 172. You go past that in the real plane, what happens is your ears start popping kind of very uncomfortably, to say the least. So that's what I want to do. They say fly straight into tree. Now we go ahead and get ready for landing. This is a good time again. Make sure your settings are correct. I've already set my HSI the way I want it. I've got everything ready. Again, this is visual flying. This is just, we're getting in the plane and you know, going for a $500 hamburger. These guys, by the way, do not have the good $500 hamburger. If you want the good $500 hamburger, you have to go over this way. <laughs> but again, there's actually a restaurant right on the spot. So from the G1000 perspective, a couple of things that we want to do before we land, like I said, we always want to consider, you know, what happens if things do not work. So I've got my you know, little display right here. One thing I like to do is I like to flip on the terrain so that it's a little bit easier to spot things. Anything that's going to be distracting to me, I usually cut out if I don't need. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually go over here real quick. Uh, we're on rel mode. What rel does is it turns all the terrain a color based on how high it is to. Okay, I'll talk about this in a later video as well. But basically what's going to happen is you're going to see all this beautiful green. This simply says that the terrain is uh, 2,000 feet away from me which is no big deal but as we start to descend anything that starts getting close will turn yellow and then it'll all turn red it's uh, super fun to watch and like i said i always get a kick out of that as we kind of come in here so let's get just a tiny bit closer to the airport oh, there we go you can see already uh, we're starting to get all sorts of nasty terrain warnings and things like that everything went from green to yellow just to say it's within a thousand feet you got to be mindful look it off my nose i can see the runway and go ahead and kill the automatic pilot and we're just going to kind of come swing over here to the right uh there are instructions for us uh like now there's landing clearance uh they said we're clear to land uh, runway two tree that basically means point your airplane at the runway and remember we took all this time to kind of get everything preloaded so we know the heading of the runway already i mean you can see the runway so it's relatively straightforward now the fun thing with this runway in the real world is uh, what you don't get to see is there's a really really nasty uh, swamp that basically sits right off into the left of the airport it's uh, right there so uh, when you come down on this one in the real world it's <laughs> yeah, you know one of these things pretty much the entire uh, duration of the landing so we're going to go set ourselves up and just kind of bring this thing right down onto the ground. We'll go ahead and take advantage of some uh, handy technology here. Now, depending what version of the G1000 you have, there's actually a lot of bells and whistles to kind of assist with the landing process. Uh, some of them actually have angle of attack displays. Some of them will have like uh, basically a little virtual screen. One thing that we don't have, which is kind of a bummer, is we don't have any of the charts. So if I come back here to charts mode, I can't flip this onto charts. Also, there's a mountain over there somewhere. You can see it because of the red text. You also got some nice little smokestacks and stuff like that. All right, let's go ahead and pull that throttle back and you know, kind of bring us in. Again, this would be a normal flight on a normal day. I'm not doing anything extreme. I'll kind of reserve that for another day. Let's just, you know, get started. All right, now it looks pretty solid there. Well, we need to really start slowing this plane down. Pull that throttle back. Uh, you can see I got two sets of whites there, which means I'm a little on the high side. So I can go ahead and pull that throttle back. I can hit the flaps basically anytime. But um, one of the neat things about Groton is they're actually passing big airplanes through this area now. So one of the downsides is they'll say expedite your approach or something along those lines. Notice, by the way, that my little terrain display on the right is now bright red. But notice I have a contrast between my terrain display and my little traffic display to make it a little bit simpler to kind of tell the two apart. All right, let's go pull that throttle back. You know, swing over here to the left. And the fun one is in the real plane. You pull the throttle back, the nose goes, aww. <laughs> because unfortunately, uh, once you do that, what's going to happen is, you know, I kind of get quite as much wash over the tail, which apparently Microsoft is uh, currently working on. Let the nose come down just a tiny bit more. And now we can go ahead and bring those lovely flaps in. I'm going to have to push the throttle to about 75% here because uh, once those flaps come down, this thing gets very slow. Notice, by the way, that we have a little G symbol there now. That'll just kind of give us a little bit of a heads up there. Eh, 65 should do it. We could probably go down to 60 if we wanted. On the 172i fly, it's miles an hour, so we use 70. But like I said, it's a little bit different here. That looks pretty good. Pretty nice little spot. You always pick your aiming point, and remember, your aiming point is not necessarily a touchdown point. One of the things with the aiming point is it's just a reference. So if I see the runway start to get flat, it means we're getting low. If the runway starts getting tall, it means we're getting too high. Come right over. we got plenty of room. I'm just going to pull that throttle all the way to zero. And we're going to turn into ground effect. Nose comes up just a tiny bit. And you hear that whoop, whoop, and we're down. Delightful. All right, so this concludes the video. And like I said, the whole purpose of this video was just to kind of show you like the whole system in action. You know, this is what I would do. This is kind of how I use it, the absolute basics. In the next few videos, we'll be taking a look at kind of, you know, the minutia, you know, all the interface, you know, how to use the individual buttons, as well as flight planning. Enjoy.